Welcome back to my animal education series. So, as you saw in the last video, we kind of built the whole fountain and stream and did all the main important stuff to make this entire enclosure function properly. And we're gonna make it all look pretty and do all the other like, important stuff like decorate it, add plants, substrate, um, all the other fun stuff. So I have some river pebbles that I'm gonna use as a false bottom in the land area. Then I have some pea pebbles for the water area. Uh, then I'll be using a custom substrate that I kind of copied from Serpa Design as well, with Eco Earth Repti Soil, which is already mixed on its own, and then organic sand. We're gonna see how all that works. But the first step today is we're going to take all those slate stems out, like I mentioned. We're going to take some silicone and lay it down all over there. Pack some eco earth and some earthy soil that I'm going to mix up for it. And kind of make all the foam look natural and like dirt. And then we're going to run the filter again, see if all the silicone that was put down for the eco earth fixed a couple of the leaking issues. And if not, that sucks. I might just deal with it or I'm going to try to fix it off camera. But without further ado, let's get started on it. So I'm taking all these stones out so that when I run the filter and stuff again, I have to empty out all the water or when I put all the eco earth and rupti soil on the foam here and I have to dump out all the excess those stones aren't siliconed in at all uh, these three are kinda but they're the silicone was wet when I applied it so probably didn't stick that well at all so all the rest of this stuff here is just gonna fall out and maybe chip the glass or whatever and I don't want that to happen but for the time being I'm just gonna take all these out for just to make my life easier with everything else Alright, so I got a lot of progress done since that last clip. Um, I had the camera at my dad's place so he can download the videos from part one of this. And I really am excited about this tank and I didn't want to stop progress so I kept on going. Well, what we got over here is I put some cocoa fiber liner on the front of this. I'll get a close up then. And I put silicone all over the edge of the stream here on the sides. Since I was having some kind of leak issue from somewhere back there and in between there, I put a bunch of silicone on there, I put eco earth on that as well, hoping it would help seal that up. And that's actually the next step. I vacuumed all the excess here. What I did do is I used a paintbrush and kind of got brushed it all off. The next step now is to put some pitchers of water in, like I have um, off camera here. And we're just going to start pouring in, turn on the pump, and hope that it's all waterproof. Because if it's waterproof, that means we're good to go to put the substrate in and actually get plants and buy a plant light for this. Okay y'all, this is the moment of truth because if I have a leak then I have to do a lot more silicone work. It's going to be kind of a pain in the butt but I put a lot of silicone everywhere so it should be good. This is starting to look so good now. Just having the substrate in here is making me so much more excited to get this thing planted and finished. I'm not a very patient person. If you know me in real life, you definitely know I'm not patient at all. So the fact that I waited about, I think it was a week and a half between now and when I got all the supplies. And this is just absolutely insane. This is my first enclosure I've done 100% by myself. And because usually my dad helps me because he's more skilled with foam and stuff than I am. That probably would not have happened if my dad helped me. Gotta be honest there. But this is coming together. And it doesn't even have any plants or any like decorations in it. It has a stream and some dirt in it. And I did just cover the rest of the repti soil because the repti soil itself is a mix of sand peat moss and everything on its own and it kind of looks better when it's just the one 
and the sphagnum moss will mostly help the isopods and springtails, which I'm also going to buy tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm heading to the Tiny Out Iguana, my local pet store, which I always go to every weekend. And they have pretty much everything uh, I'm going to need to finish this off. They have the five rally toads there for when I want to buy those. I'm going to let them know I'll be interested in those. It's the next day already, and I already made my run to Tiny Out Iguana, and I got a bunch of stuff to help finish off this tank and I completely forgot to put the false bottom of the river pebbles in there so off camera I just took all the slip straight out, put the rocks back in, put it back in that probably isn't super entertaining for you but just to tell you guys I did it, I did it. I already went ahead and put the pea pebbles in the water area so I can get that started and have it filtered through there because it just kicked up a lot of sediment because I forgot to rinse those and since I'm not putting animals in this right away, I'm not really too concerned about that right now. But I did take those little bio bags I mentioned back in part one. I put those in front of the pump so that it will get caught in those before it goes into the pump and then down the stream. Here I got some duckweed and some water lettuce. They're two different kinds of like leaf sizes, I'm going to call them. They kind of change it up, make the enclosure look different, not just one uniform surface. I got three containers of java moss so this is a very damp species of moss so this would be really good on the sides here and in the stream if I decide to put it in there which I think so. I got some zebra isopods to get the isopod population already going in there once I put in all the decorations. I got two 26 watt plant bulbs again since I'm not putting the toes in right away I didn't get any heat or anything uh, right now but once I put the toads in, I'll tell you guys about what I did with that. And for those, I got this terrarium hood for the two. I have all the wood that I showed you guys before, a piece of bark. And then when I was at tie-dye, I saw this little piece of bark. I got this for 50 cents. So that doesn't hurt anything to get more decoration. Because I could put that in the water area and I could put the java moss on that and it'll root into that. Alright, so this outro isn't exactly the way I wanted it to go. As you can see, I put a lot more plants in there. These plants have done well because I got plants that can deal with a lot of water and high humidity. Because I figure that if I have a small leak, it could get in there. All the plants could soak it up. And I don't know how well you could see that, but the soil's pretty damp. Instead of trying to hide the pump, I'm going to use plants to hide the pump instead of the foam as cool as it looks like that it's just causing all sorts of problems and I just don't want to do it the other plants are doing well I got a fern back there an air plant another piece of wood the bark is still back there it's just all covered up by some more pothos I got I got some spiny moss whatever the heck this and that plant are I don't even know what they are but they're doing amazing and so is this with me throwing my budget out the window. I'm making these mistakes so that you don't have to. So, thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. But as always, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe to my channel. And as always, I'll see you next week.